Hello listeners, I'm Tim Shadamis and it's Monday and we are officially over the one year mark of posting content. It's been a long ride so far, but so much fun. And with me as always is my talented and beautiful co-hostess, Voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome to all of our listeners. Happy anniversary, Tim Stradamus. Happy anniversary. Well, we are officially in the month of love. Exciting, isn't it? Historically, not so exciting. Now, I would like to go ahead and give us all a little history concerning the month of Valentine's Day. Officially, this actually comes from a pagan holiday celebrating fertility. And to go a little further back, the origins of Valentine's Day itself seems to have historians in a bit of a tug of war because they believe it stems from one of two men. The first man that they actually believe was a man, of course, named Valentine, who defied Emperor Claudius II, who banned marriage because he thought it was a distraction on his soldiers. And instead, this priest decided to go ahead and illegally marry couples until he was unfortunately caught and sentenced to death. What a tragic romance that is. The other Valentine was actually a man who was apparently attempting to whisk Christians away from imprisonment by Rome. And yes, unfortunately, he was imprisoned himself and sent his first Valentine, which apparently was signed from your Valentine. Well, that was a little morbid to start our anniversary off with, but, you know, Mondays. If you want, I can end it with a joke. Well, let's hear it. What do you call a romance that starts at the aquarium? Hmm. A scuba de beppo? <laughs> <laughs> no, spaghetti's on my mind. A romantic Italian date. <laughs> it's actually guppy love. Okay, guppy love. <laughs> that works. For new listeners, Voice and I enjoy reading and talking about stories from the internet that are interesting, funny, and dramatic. Because of our love of stories, we've come together and created this channel to share with you those experiences. And hopefully give you some food for that. Well, Voice. Well, Tim Stradamus. We have another shout out to make. We do. Welcome to the Tea Club, Taylor Bruno. Welcome in. Love and appreciate you. My little tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> I think they like it. I guess we'll have to see it in the comment section. Well, my little love guppy. Oh, sweet talker you. <laughs> what have you crafted for us this morning? I have brewed for you a tea that was actually suggested to us a long time ago by one of our listeners. In fact, I've named it after them. It's called Leon's Indulgence Tea. And in it, it has my vanilla bean infused black tea, one cinnamon stick, and cocoa nibs. Oh, yeah. It's got that little bit of spice with that smoothness with the cocoa nibs. Oh, yeah. Four to five. All right. Well, while you go ahead and enjoy your morning cup of brew, why don't we go ahead and delve into these stories? For any listeners wanting to follow along, all story links are in the description below. For our first story, am I the a-hole? For crying at my gender reveal? I'll try to make this short. I have two children, both boys. I'm currently pregnant with my fourth after a loss. My mother-in-law offered to be the gender keeper. She got the confetti cannons. This is my last pregnancy, so I wanted to do a small reveal with close family and friends. My last was during COVID, and we had to skip all the cutesy things. I have two boys, and of course would adore a little girl. I would also be happy keeping my boy mom crown, but damn, a little girl would just be so freaking sweet. We get to the cannons. Mother-in-law hands us both a cannon. Husband gets his to go first, and all I see is pink confetti, the sweetest surprise. My life with my daughter flashing in my mind, hugging my husband, tears shed. I was shaking, happy. I'm always very calm and collected when I'm excited. My mom crying happy for me. This is the biggest, best surprise I've ever had. I was expecting a third boy. But soon after celebrating, my mother-in-law interrupts, telling me I have to do mine too. I was so excited to see the pink confetti from my husband's that I never set mine off. I am assuming it's also pink because I'm not having twins, but instead it's blue. I instantly regret my initial ecstatic response. Why are there both colors now? She then hands us the real cannons, and they both pop blue. Of course, I can't match my previous energy. I hugged my husband and people around me and excused myself, and I cried. 
and I haven't really stopped for hours now. Don't get me wrong. I am so incredibly thankful for the opportunity to have any children, and I know health is number one. That isn't lost on me. But it's also as if I had this space and time where my dream of a daughter came true, and I experienced the joy of having a girl join my crazy boy-filled family, and now I'm grieving that. I know I'll love my son with all my heart, and I am not upset he's a boy at all. It's just the roller coaster to find out who he was broke my heart today. I feel like a jerk for being so upset, but all this happened in front of an audience. I'm so embarrassed, and this happy video taken of the reveal isn't even real. It's a moment in time I got my heart broken. I don't understand the humor even if everything had gone according to plan. What was the point? I didn't find the humor or what the end goal was. Am I the a-hole for being upset? So I guess we're going to get started on a tis peak, my lord, type of situation. Sad orca sounds. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this story really does suck because gender reveals are supposed to be a, a fun event. And I know as a parent, you maybe want to lock in on, you know, a boy or a girl. You know, everyone has those feelings. And for her, she already lays out why she feels the way she does. She's already had boys. She would definitely be okay with another boy, but she wants a girl. So this gender reveal happens. And who exactly was in charge of the gender canons? The mother-in-law. The mother-in-law. Okay. Was there ever an explanation as to why she did what she did? I'm failing to understand, just like she is, where the fun comes in. Well, there is sort of an update. But I would like to hear your point of view first before I read it. She's definitely not the a-hole. I think in the moment, most people can understand that what she went through was wrong. I'm certain that that mother-in-law probably knows how much she wanted a daughter. So for you to have played that joke on them, I just, I, I'm trying not to label her a complete monster because I don't know exactly what, who planned it. Was it just her? Was it the family? Was it her husband? I doubt it was the husband. I don't need the update to say, gotcha. You know, my, <laughs> my husband was behind this the entire time. He thought it'd be a fun way to destroy me at a gender reveal. No, because remember, the both of them had to do the canons yeah. to know. I'm very sad for her only because she gets to remember that moment the way it happened. And that's not something you undo. I am interested to hear this update, though. Well, the consensus on Reddit was that our OP is not the a-hole. In fact, many felt either the mother-in-law was probably one of the most stupidest to have pulled this prank or was doing it through malicious intent. Nobody could really feel or gauge whether it was one or the other. Now, I will say for some of the Redditors that were coming through almost feeling as if they were trying to guilt our OP for, I guess, hoping for one gender over the other. I don't think it is right to make anyone feel bad for them hoping for either a boy or a girl. I would just like to say this to piggyback off that. I understand people trying to give their opinions on the situation. If our OP is saying, I only wanted a girl, if it's not a boy, I'm throwing the whole thing out. That's not what this was. She explained to you very rationally that she hopes for a girl, but she's still going to love her child unconditionally the way it is, regardless of the gender. She said that. That was plain and simple. So why go out of your way to make a point that never needed to be made? I think for a lot of people, it's more of, I think it's more of those parents and they, it's like a projection where they feel as if a parent that hopes for one or the other that they will forever stigmatize their child for being something that they're not. I think that's a little ridiculous to assume everyone is like that. I definitely, I hands down agree with you on that. I think as long as you're a parent that understands that genetic roulette, you can't help what your body wants to create when it's creating a little human. And if you were to treat your child badly or weirdly, my mother wished I was a boy and I always felt weird because it was as if my mother wanted me to be the little boy that she had wanted from the get-go. 
but that I also had to be this little girl too. And for a long time, I didn't know where I really fit. I was always very confused, especially when you have a parent telling you that you should have been a little boy. I think having those really weird, and as I said, I can only speak on this based on experience, our OP doesn't feel like that to me at all. So to go ahead and start accusing our OP, who's very honest, they were hoping for one thing. Any parent can hope for one thing. The first thing that you should hope for, of course, is the health of your child. And she already explains that that's what she knows. (laughs) Exactly. And I think hitting our OP hard on other projected issues, because I imagine there are a lot of Redditors out there who have experienced the same thing that I have. I can't imagine that you are a man or a woman who has ever experienced the confusion of a parent who wanted you to be the other. And you're trying to just find your identity in this world. I get that. I empathize for those people. It took me a long time to find the person that I am now. And the only reason why I've even been able to flourish is because of you, Tim Stradamus, and your support and anything that I want to be. I think having those types of people and support in your life really grounds you. At the same time, it can be a very double-edged sword when you have somebody that still has their agendas behind it, whether it's family or friends. I would just say for any listeners out there that even want this little bit of advice, take the time and really question the things that interest you, that you feel makes you you. And then build off of that one little step at a time till you make the person that you're happy with. Now, let's go on to this update because I think I got a little too serious there. Whew. So our OP had an edited to add info, which felt a little bit of a info and update. Our OP says, mother-in-law did quickly apologize at the end of the night. After spending the rest of the time scrolling her phone, honestly, I didn't want to talk to her. I gave her a hug and walked away to be polite. I'd like to think it wasn't meant to be cruel as I thought we had a good relationship. I have helped her in a lot of ways I won't get into here. That being said, even had everything gone according to plan, I don't understand what the point is. Confusion at best? I don't see what the humor is in it. I had thought the same as many. A completely gender-neutral canon would have been better and would have left no room for error. She even said she meant to give my husband the blue one, thinking there was a chance he'd get his to pop first, which just makes me think she did realize things could go wrong and still decided this would be funny. Yes, we were to set them off at the same time, but of course there's room for error, which unfortunately happened. I saw the first one go off pink and was so excited, I assumed mine would be pink too logically. My husband was also happy. He thought we were finally adding a little girl to our family. He wasn't happy about the joke either, and I've told him I'm going to need space from his mom for now. Comments about me not being happy it was a boy. I'm completely content and happy with any baby. I love my boys with all my heart, and I love this baby with all my heart. My second was born a birth defect that we spent lots of time correcting in and out of the hospital his first year and continue to monitor. I understand what is important here, and that's a happy, healthy baby. It was the fact that I had the rug ripped out from under me with an audience that I'm upset about. After two of the same gender, I'm assuming parents would be happy for either, but I think many parents would have a little spark of hope to experience the other side. As far as gender reveals, I wanted a small thing for my last baby. If you think they're dumb as frick, don't have one. Also, my cannons were confetti and popped inside my home. I didn't kill any wildlife, set a whole county on fire, or murder anyone in the process, although it crossed my mind by the end of the night, lol joking. Thank you everyone for the nice comments and the reassurance I'm not out of line with my feelings. Pregnancy can be an emotional roller coaster. No, it sounds like there is rational people that got to speak to her and she heard them because honestly, it's not wrong to feel what you feel, especially when you're taking in the circumstances. It isn't like she said she doesn't want the kid anymore and that because it's a boy, everything's terrible. 
But that's what a lot of people heard. And you are correct. It sounds like a lot of self-projection was thrown into this mix instead of just being rational and listening to the problem. It sounds like she has a good head on her shoulder. She's a lovely mom. Agreed. Well, let's kind of go back in time a little. And for our next story, this took place about 10 months ago. Am I the a-hole for wanting my wife to contribute towards household expenses proportionally? When my wife and I married, we decided that she would be a stay-at-home mom. She is Russian and has gone no contact with her family since around the time we got married, since they are alcoholics. She came here as a student. We have a five-year-old daughter. Our arrangement was that I gave her an allowance for buying anything she wanted for herself, and then I paid for other expenses that we both agree on. I make more than enough for all of us. It has always been a point of contention, and she wanted me to increase her allowance. Sometimes, when we disagree on a purchase like a toy for our daughter, she will use her allowance to get it, then expect me to reimburse her allowance for it. Additionally, she wants to buy expensive makeup and use it even for just going out to see friends casually. Recently, since our daughter started school, she has started doing a few gig jobs like dog walking. I was not for it, but I can't stop her from doing what she wants. However, the time she spends doing that means that she has less time to be a stay-at-home mom, so I told her recently that I expect her to pay for house expenses proportionally to what she earns. She disagreed, and I said I could just reduce her allowance in that case, as she now earns. She got quite angry with me, and we fought. Things seem better now. But sometimes I feel she is still a little upset. She used some minor things against me, like the few times I asked her for money as I did not have change for small purchases. Was I the a-hole here? I think it is only fair to change the arrangement now that she works. All right. So let's go on um, a journey. So we have a husband and we have a wife. The wife is a stay-at-home. No, I don't know if he specifies if it's by choice or not, but he does say that I'm guessing wherever they move to, she's not from that country and she's got no contact with her family due to their issues. Now, I guess upon having their kid, there was an allowance bestowed upon her. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I don't like that word only because an allowance is something you tend to give your children. When you're talking about finances, especially when it's couples, it's called a budget. And you agree upon making sure that each of you can spend X amount of dollar per month or week or however you lay it out. Something that you can do without feeling stress or guilt about whether or not it's hitting over a budget that you guys have set for each other together. That doesn't sound like that's been happening here because he says several times that when they have conversations about how she wants to spend her allowance... That he doesn't agree, and then she goes and does it. That's not a conversation. That's not compromise. That's you pushing your partner into such a corner now that she just goes ahead and does it. And then you deal with the fallout of it. And now we're here because for some reason you believe that, I guess the gripe is because she's a dog walker now, that she's making this absorbent amount of money. So that way he can now take away some of the allowance that he's given her. What? I don't understand why you guys couldn't have had a conversation about the budget unless you believe that because she's a housewife, she's not on the same level of human as you. <laughs> because that's what it sounds like to me. I understand that you're trying to be a good husband and I don't know where you're from. Maybe your values are a little different than mine and maybe maybe I'm off kilter here. But the way we do things is that would have been talked about in a budget and it wouldn't have been strong armed into believing that just because someone's making a little bit of money. Because again, it's dog walking. Although I do recommend that you definitely, I'm not sure. She said she moved there for uh, her degree. She was in school. Yeah, she came, I'm presuming, to the country that they're in now because she was a student. I would definitely recommend her finishing her education if she hasn't. Go getting a job that gives her the independence to do what she wants. Because it sounds like you two are at this weird inner past where respect has gone out the window and it's because you believe somehow you own the rights to what she does in life because you make the money and somewhere along the way it stopped being a partnership and it started being a ownership that's not healthy 
Can I ask this though? It's it's rubbing me wrong. Does he also have an allowance? Is this in there? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> OP, you are definitely the a hole. You got to have some talks with your wife, and you guys need to go get some type of, I guess, counseling, either for because of where the sounds like the relationship's at, and maybe some financial. You guys aren't talking anymore. I don't even know if they talked to begin with based on how their relationship is. But let me go ahead and give you the consensus on Reddit. The consensus was that our OP is definitely the a-hole. And to put it simply, a lot of Redditors came forward and was saying, you know, this is textbook financial abuser and just controlling. Now, there was another interesting point that I thought was brought up in the chat because individuals were coming forward and saying, oh my goodness, I can't believe a woman would want to wear makeup to go and meet friends because she cares about her image. (laughs) That was an interesting comment. Now, I find it funny because I read through, of course, these comments. There was one commenter that I think describes the reason why a lot of women enjoy wearing makeup when they go out, regardless of where they're going. So let me go ahead and read that. The commenter said, I briefly dated a man who couldn't understand how I would wear makeup for any other reason than for other men. I worked an extremely chaotic events job, and I told him how I liked to wear makeup because I felt better about my day when I washed my hands and saw myself in the mirror looking refreshed. I like to catch my reflection and think, damn girl, when I was basically dying inside working 14 plus hour days. But no, He could only understand if I wanted to wear makeup for other men. I think regardless of reasonings as why anyone wants to do anything, you shouldn't be judging them for it. I hands down agree with that. Well, our OP did give us a little bit of an edited update. So let me go ahead and read that. Our OP said, I get it. I am an a-hole. I know I have controlling restrictions on her. We rushed into marriage for her visa issues as she could not find a job and hence married me. I always intended to lessen them once I trusted her, and I realize I really do. My dad insisted I be careful because of what people say about Russian brides. She has an Ivy degree in physics, and I know her dream is to be in science. I will talk to her if she still wants to get a master's or try getting jobs again now that she has permanent residence. And I will tell her to just use the shared account for any expenses, as long as it's not like a thousand dollar expense. It sounds like they haven't agreed on what budget should look like, because he sounds very scared and shaky handed of like, okay, I'm going to put this here, but please don't touch it. But if you do only use this little bit, you guys need to definitely talk about what is within reason of a budget. Like, at least then when you have an idea, especially when you're talking about couple spending, at least then everyone can be responsible and understand what's going on. Well, the great part is OP's wife sounds extremely smart. She's got her degree in physics and her dream job has always been to be in science. I hope she really pursues that. I think it's very interesting. And after this update, There was a commenter that said that they had hope that maybe there'd be some form of communication starting. You know, our OP did take the a-hole tag and is trying to make himself better, right? However, there were others that were coming forward and saying, I don't know, the fact that he said how his dad insisted that he be careful because of Russian brides makes us scream and wonder, is this really his wife or is she a hostage? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. But the good thing is if he does have that conversation with her, maybe she'll be able to get on a path that she wants to be. And it'll give them both peace of mind. If they still want that relationship or not, at least it won't be coming from. Because it sounds like it started at a interesting spot where she married him just because of a visa problem. Right? So we already have, we're already playing with that issue. That I don't can know. bring a lot of insecurities to any relationship when you feel as if that yeah. relationship isn't built on love and trust. So if you recall, I told you that that post was about 10 months ago, correct? Yes. The only reason why I even got into that post is because of this one from the same OP. And let's see if he's learned anything or not, shall we? Oh, my lanta. For our next story. Am I the a-hole for not buying my wife $350 shoes? I am on a trip to a country in Asia for work and left from the U.S. 
My work was okay with me bringing my wife along as I paid for her tickets, so I thought I'd treat her to a trip. I paid for her ticket and left our six-year-old with a friend. We were slightly rushed as we made it to the airport a little late and weren't sure about the lines at security. Unfortunately for my wife, once we crossed security, the heel on her boot broke. I don't know why, but she insists on wearing heels everywhere and was all dressed up for this trip. Like, not completely broken, but would completely fold outward so she had to walk on tiptoe. Unfortunately, there weren't too many shops, and the shops we found were rather expensive. Most of the women's shoes were weird looking, but she liked one pair of heeled boots. However, it was around $350, which, while I could afford it, it didn't seem reasonable to me. We were already near the gate, so I suggested looking again at our layover airport in Europe. Unfortunately, we had the same problem there, and while there were more shops, many of them were closed, and the one open shop we found in our terminal had even more outrageous prices of around 400 pounds. Eventually, I just told her to wait until we arrived, and she changed her shoes when we picked our checked bags. Am I the a-hole here? She is a stay-at-home mom, so she doesn't have her own money, and after the cost of flights and paying my friend to babysit, we'd already spent more than usual. She seemed to handle it fine, just had to walk on tiptoe and put less pressure on the broken heel, and I carried the heavier cabin luggage. However, she got upset with me after we arrived, despite not saying much during the trip. Am I the a-hole? Well, given what we already know about him, I would have hoped that there was a chance after the first story. But given that you just said it again, am I wrong? She's just a housewife. My guy, you are a douche. <laughs> <laughs> they are in Europe, so this fits. Like, come on with that. All right. Well, you're clearly a pretty big a-hole. I can get on the side of thinking about finances. I can understand that. We just talked about it. You're going on a trip. Normally, when you go on trips, I don't care who you are or how much you make. Normally, you should have an idea about what is within reason of a budget. But you told me that your wife's heel broke in the airport. And from that point on to wherever you landed, she was walking on her toes. And you said she dealt with it. From the U.S. to Europe, which you know is a long trip. She dealt with it because she understands who she's married to. And I still don't understand why she's not. I'm hoping there's an update about if she's looking for a job or trying to get her independence from this because it's it's like this. Because you could be getting into a situation where she doesn't want to do anything. You have the education. We know now it isn't about her completing it. She has an education. Correct. The kid is six now. So no longer needing you to be there 24-7. It depends on, honestly, the values and the wants of that relationship. Personally, do I think it's healthy? Oh, hell no. It sounds like a very transactional relationship. If you're at a point voice where we're in the middle of a trip and you're uncomfortable or, or if i'm at a point let's say uh, my heel broke from my shoe i guess <laughs> or, or whatever whatever i'm doing something is uncomfortable on me the shoe doesn't fit right i don't think you'd sit there and tell me just because a shoe was 350 dollars that i'm just gonna have to deal with it we would figure out a solution but it doesn't sound like that was ever even talked about with them it was more like they went into the store they understood it was expensive and he said, that's not happening. But she's just a stay-at-home mom, so she doesn't make her own money. And that's the issue is that's how he's able to push past Dehumanize her? Kind. <laughs> because in bit. my mind, that's what it is. It's dehumanizing her because you can't visualize yourself in that role. In my mind, being a parent is a lot of work. And yes, when they get a little older and they're able to go to school, it frees up your time to do what you need. Sometimes that's why one partner has a part-time job yep. to be able to fill in those gaps. I think, and this is where, as you can tell, the Reddit rating on this was our OP is definitely the a-hole. The way that our OP talks about his wife is deplorable. It's almost as if she should be ashamed that she's even asking for anything. And whew, there were a lot of individuals that came out of the woodworks between reading the first post that I told you about and this one. They said, how could you not have learned 
from your first one and how you're talking, a lot of individuals said, this has got to be rage bait. I don't know. I think this was a real person simply because not long after this, he took down both posts. In my mind, there had to have been some form of shame the moment that they kept rolling through when it came to Redditor's responses that they just couldn't handle the heat anymore. This post just dug in who he was. And yes, as you said, Tim Stradamus, it is her decision to continue to stay with him. If this is a transactional relationship, that's just the way that it rolls. If he's trying to come on here and ask if he's the hero, it really was the wrong place. Individuals came out saying, OP, you are toxic and you are still controlling. And a lot of others came out saying, you know, you really haven't learned anything, have you? Not even a little bit. Now, I will say, and this part always bothers me, at least personally, for any couples, when you have a stay-at-home parent, whether you're mom or dad, the money that one parent makes when they are out working, that is your cumulative family money that's earned for the house. Unfortunately, I have bumped into a couple people in my lifetime that have talked and treated their significant other like that when they were the main breadwinners. But it definitely does put a bad taste in your mouth. You hope that for this OP, and this is what I sincerely hope because I still stand by what I said earlier. She truly does need to, because she does have her education, go seek something better in life because you're not going to get it by having someone who thinks the way he does about you continue to lord that over yourself. Well, let's go ahead and walk away from this bad tasting story. And let's go to our next one, which I think will really have your head scratch when it comes to this whole situation. For our next story, am I the a-hole for calling the police on my neighbors and calling her and her husband pedos at their hall of N? Yes, it's spelled correctly, party. Throw away. My husband, 39 male, and I, 35 female, moved to this country when we first got married due to his work. We had our first child, female six, here. He was then moved to Germany, where our other two, four male and three female, were born. His company decided to move him here again, but to the opposite side of the country to where we lived the last time after we had our fourth, female five months. So needless to say, we know the culture despite not being native. Our daughter started school this August for the first time, and a lot of her classmates live in the same area we do. One of the boys in our class lives at the end of the road behind us. When we first moved into the neighborhood back in May, we were welcomed by a few of our close neighbors and this boy's mother, let's call her Astrid. She took a shine to my baby, but most people fuss over babies, so I didn't think much of it. The same day she told me of how she had lost two baby girls and how lucky I was to have so many girls, and she only had three boys. The day after, she came with her husband, let's call him Morton, and he too wanted to pick up the baby and paid her a lot of compliments, until he met our oldest daughter and made a remark which I didn't think much of at the time. He said my daughter and his son could easily pass for twins, as they are in the same class and they look alike. They don't. My daughter is super blonde with gray eyes, and their son has dark blondish hair with hazel eyes, so I corrected him. He feigned offense, and said what he meant was she could pass for his daughter, the baby too. Again, I corrected them that with his light brown hair and hazel eyes, neither of my girls could. He once again insisted, and said, I mean our features, not the coloring. Then he laughed it off and said he was just joking. They then invited us to go out for drinks, but we declined, as neither one of us drinks, and we don't like to get too friendly with neighbors. During the summer, when we bumped into them at the local store a few times, Morton and Astrid would call her Jules Jern, and sing a song from a famous movie here. After a few times, I told him to knock it off as it was no longer funny. Since May and up until a week ago, they have tried to invite us to many get-togethers, which I found strange, as they hardly ever invite the neighbors that they have known for longer than us. Morton and Astrid would quite often talk to my daughter on her way back to school as she passes their house on the way home, and she said that it bothers her, and they have both tried to pick her up, 
and Astrid has tried a few times to touch her hair. When my husband confronted them about it, they said it's just the culture here. It's not. The picking up and touching her hair stopped after that. At the beginning of October, they wanted us to help them host a Halloween party at the end of October and wanted us to meet them at their house so we could coordinate the children's costumes, especially the twins. We declined again as we don't celebrate Halloween. They tried to convince us otherwise and were very pushy. Even had their son knock on our door a few times to play with his twin after school. Knocking on doors to play with other children is normal, and most children roam out and about as it's a safe neighborhood and country, so that part was never suspicious to me. However, after the umpteenth time of calling my daughter one of his twins, I put my foot down and said he needed to stop joking about it as it's not funny anymore. My husband goes offshore at times due to his work, and it has been me and the children since mid-October. My daughter's teacher also lives in the neighborhood, and she is a child friend of Astrid. She was present in the park by our house when Astrid came up to me and handed me three costumes, one for each of my girls. She said, as we don't celebrate Halloween, her and her husband have decided to host a Halloween party instead, and wanted my girls to wear these. I was shocked, but told her no. It would not happen. The teacher tried to convince me that this would be a nice way of meeting other families, and it would be fun for our children. Astrid said she had spent a lot of money on adjusting the costumes and had found the right hairstyle for my daughter to go as Gretel to her son's Hans. I told her no one made her spend the money, as I had made it very clear that none of my children would be going. Right in front of me, she took the hairband off my daughter's hair and tried to put one that she had bought for the costume. I told her to stop and started walking off. She tried to apologize and said, relax. We are neighbors and friends. Her teacher followed me and said not to be uptight and that Astrid meant no harm. She just likes girls. On Monday, my daughter came home with a different hairstyle and accessories to what I had sent her off with. I asked her how she got them, and she said her teacher had done her hair during lunch. I asked her if she had played rough so her hair needed to be fixed. She said no. Yesterday morning, I spoke to her teacher, and she confirmed that it was indeed her who had fixed her hair and that it was Astrid who bought the stuff. I asked her why she would go against my wishes to which she said it was only hair stuff, and Astra didn't want to throw it away as she had spent money on it. She thought with three daughters I would appreciate help with free accessories. She also said that I had not made it explicitly clear not to fix my daughter's hair. I left after telling her never to do it again and return the stuff. In the evening, the neighborhood children went trick-or-treating. Those participating were informed it would last from six to eight. I let my daughter go off and play with one of the other girls who wasn't trick-or-treating. At about seven, I couldn't hear them, so I went outside to check, and they were not there. I asked one of the other children if they had seen her, and they said Morton and Astrid had collected her in their car, and her friend had gone home. I asked next door to watch my other two while I ran with the baby to their place. When I arrived there, they were having a party in the garden, and my daughter was there. She had her hair done, and she had a candy bag. She was also wearing the costume. So in my anger, I called the police before speaking to anyone, and once I got off the call, I called both of them pedos and everything under the sun in multiple languages. When the police arrived, I spoke to them, and then we left. Today at school, her teacher was very short with me and said there was no need for that as Morton volunteers for the children's football club. Having a police report filed on him was not the wisest of choices. She explained that if I wasn't happy, I should have asked for a mediation appointment at the school instead of embarrassing Astrid and Morton in front of everyone. She also mentioned that it was her who helped my daughter change into the costume, and it's not unusual for teachers to help their students change here. That part is partially true for this country. 
She said Astrid has been grieving and her behavior is normal for someone who lost so many children one after the other and not to make it harder on her as people have gossiped quite a bit about it. She said they didn't know they had crossed a line and it wouldn't happen again. So just drop the complaint at the police. On Friday, I have to make a full statement at the police station. She wants me to cancel it as Astrid and Morton are not bad people, and she thinks I should be glad someone else thinks this highly of my daughter. She wasn't harmed, and she sees no reason for me being angry, as the children all play in each other's garden anyway. She said not to blow things out of proportion, as at no point was my daughter alone with Morton. Am I the a-hole for calling the police instead of mediation at the school as the first step? Because it was from a place of love and grief that they did this? This sounds like a spa summit. <laughs> and uh, what a terrifying story. Because I, the way I'm interpreting this anyway, is that we have two individuals who are not the parent of a child that are going out of their way to convince themselves that they are a parent of that child. I mean, by forcefully trying to push the twins aspect and the whole looks thing. Features. We're not talking about hair color and stuff. We're talking about features. They've convinced themselves into believing that a child is theirs and they're actively walking through the steps of, we're almost talking about in my mind, kidnapping. Like we're, we're bordering on some very sketchy things. I understand that they're kind of masking it behind. Well, this is just the culture. Right. The teacher does it several times. And that teacher is very scary as well. Are they friends? Remember, the teacher is childhood friends with Astrid. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. Now, I understand that she's only doing it because I guess that couple has had loss with kids. Correct. And they were girls. And that really does. And I am so sorry for that. And that does need to be taken into account with this story, but only on the side of a true friend would have said they need to go get help. OP, protect your kids. You're not wrong for being afraid that your kid was taken. And when you discover that they were at a party that you said they were not allowed at, that this couple keeps imposing themselves on your daughter to the point where they were like waiting when the daughter was walking back and forth from school to pick her up and touch her hair the teacher doing now i've heard that before where teachers will do the hair of a student oh yes i mean even as a child my hair has gotten messed up i've gone to a teacher to help me put my hair back in a style that i thought was cute either a braid or a ponytail or but this teacher understands this situation quite clearly because she also took i guess hair supplies from Astrid. And it was only for this little girl. You were willing to be an accomplice to the delusion. I think all three of you need to go see counseling. Those are very dangerous waters. I would definitely proceed with making that police report because it sounds like this problem has continued to occur. We're not talking about a one-off incident. I think we've hit on at least three or four of them in this one story. Correct. OP, you're not the a-hole. Well... The consensus on Reddit was that our OP is definitely not the a-hole. In fact, as many people pointed out, just like you did, this is essentially almost kidnapping. And more people said, please get a lawyer. You need to start protecting yourself from these people. Get restraining orders, whatever you need. These are your children, not theirs. And the fact that the teacher is overstepping their bounds is absolutely gross misconduct. Now, as you know, This was around Halloween time, so about three months ago. Our OP posted an update a month after that. So let me go ahead and read to you that update. Thank you for all the reassurances. It was helpful. A lot of people asked about an update and many DM to see how it was going. We filed a report at the police station and basically we were dismissed. We had two female officers on the first day, but a male officer came in and offered us some water tried to do some small talk. He is the ex of my daughter's teacher and told us as much. We had to do the report over two days as on the first day, my daughter was too tired to relay all the details. On the second appointment, we had the two female officers and her ex also joined us. It seemed like he had already talked to her teacher about it, but he denied it when I confronted him about it, citing confidentiality. 
I was told they would have a word with Astrid and Morton, but I doubt they took it seriously as all three kind of defended their actions, wanting to know why I wouldn't let my daughter go to a party. When we got home, we had a knock on the door in the evening and it was Astrid and Morton. I didn't open the door. On Saturday the 11th, while my daughter was playing in the garden with my next-door neighbor's children, she said Astrid was taking pictures of her from across the street. On the Sunday, they came by again and kept knocking on the door. They said they knew I was inside and that they wanted to talk. I didn't open the door. I phoned the police, and they said if they become violent, call back. In the meantime, just open the door and tell them you don't want to talk to them. I didn't, and they left. They left a message in my post box. It was a long message about how they felt connected to my daughter and how I should take better care of her, how they know how it feels to lose a child and that they only want what is best for her. On the 15th, I kept my daughter from school as she said that Astrid's son kept teasing her. Instead, I spoke to the principal about the matter and explained that I needed this absence validated. I took my daughter to the store and and I think maybe I was followed because not five minutes had gone by when Astrid walked in and bumped into me by the dairy section. She apologized and blocked me in with her cart because I tried to get away. She started talking to my daughter and tried to stroke my baby's hair, so I screamed. That made her walk away from me. The day after, I found another note in the post box telling me not to be so hysterical, and I have that saved. I phoned my husband to come home or find a reason to get home as soon as possible. On the 18th, both Astrid and Morton confronted me in the park and wanted to know why I was keeping Julius Jern away from them due to a misunderstanding. I told them politely, Morton is a big guy and I am not as strong as him, that my husband was home. I lied. They walked away. I phoned the police and gave them the latest evidence on the harassment but they said they would have a word with the two. On Monday, I attended a meeting with the principal and the teacher where she apologized, but she made it out that it was a misunderstanding. The principal was very nice and told the teacher to back off sternly and not to mix her professional life and private life. Astrid and Morton came by my house that evening, and while I was attending to laundry in the basement, they were talking to my girl in the garden, and she let slip that her dad wasn't home yet. They gave her some cookies, but she threw them in the outside bin when they watched on. On Tuesday, they confronted us on the way to school and asked me why I lied about my husband. Luckily, I wasn't alone, and one of the neighbors on my street told them to back off. On the way back from picking her up at the end of the day, we took a taxi home. In the evening, they were banging on my door again, and they had their sons with them. I called the police, but they only arrived after they had left. I discussed it with my husband on the phone, and he managed to get three days off, but he won't be home before this weekend, as his workplace didn't see it as an emergency until yesterday's incident. Yesterday, they came by again, while we were in the park. I was preoccupied with my son and I noticed a tap on my shoulder. It was Morton holding my daughter and he said I should take better care of her as she might walk into the road while my attention is elsewhere. He made it out as if she had run into the street, but my daughter denied it. I grabbed her and the other children and left and packed some stuff. I asked my next door, to collect my post and hold on to it while I booked a hotel. She informed me that the post office will do it for free for 14 days, but that she will look out for my house and note if they come by again. Words gone round that they are being a bit weird about my daughter. I have been staying in this hotel since, and my husband is arranging ticket for us to visit my parents before the Christmas holidays. At this point, I don't want to stay here anymore, and my husband will have to ask for a transfer. I spoke to the principal, and she said she would check in on my daughter in the morning and keep her at pickup time, and I can pick her up from the office. I haven't told the principal about our moving plans, just in case she mentions it to another teacher and it gets back to Astrid's friend. I hate lying, 
but I feel that if I don't, it may put us at risk. One of my neighbors on the other side of the street said both Astrid and Morton have mentioned they suspect that I neglect my child, and that they try to insinuate that maybe I was too overwhelmed with four little ones while my husband was offshore. She told them I wasn't, and they have now moved on to another neighbor trying to badmouth me. It seems like they are recruiting witnesses slash helpers. So my neighbor said it's best to keep documentation in case they call child support services on us and to get a copy and confirmation from police that there is bad blood between us. My husband can deal with the paperwork and the aftermath and join us when he can arrange a transfer, but I'm not staying here anymore. This is a very severe story. Protect your kids. Do what you need to do. I am very shocked for their persistence. And it sounds like because we are dealing with a very small town, not only are you dealing with it at your home on your doorstep, you're also dealing with it institutionally. You're dealing with it at the school from the friend teacher. You're dealing with it with the cops. Nothing is safe. How dangerous of a situation is this? Ridiculously dangerous. I bet the stress from that has got to be overwhelming. Well, let me go ahead and give you our final update concerning this story from our OP. Hopefully it's good. And this was about a month ago. Our OP says, A lot has happened in the last few days. I don't want to give too many details as the story has been leaked to other social media without my approval. I also don't want Astrid and Morton to find this now that it's on several platforms. I am at my parents. We are all safe now. My husband will be joining us in the new year once he sorts out his new assignment. I won't say what country we are in now as my husband said that Astrid came by the house under the guise of giving us Christmas cookies two days ago wondering why my daughter hadn't been at school. He told her politely to leave. Before leaving, I only told the principal and not her teacher. Her principal understood and said it was her responsibility to relay that information to the class and the teacher. Today, she was at our place again asking him where she was as the principal told the class that my daughter was sad to leave them, but we had moved, no other details given. She made her school friends drawings that were given to them. Sad as it is, I don't want her to contact her friends in case they say something to the wrong person. My daughter will make new friends and hopefully won't miss her Norwegian friends too much. I did tell two of my closest neighbors on the day I was leaving, but they were always on friendly terms with me and they were on my side all along. To be honest, I don't know where my husband might get sent next. For now, we are all safe. Thank you for all the support. I know I didn't reply to all, but I had a lot going on. Please don't hold it against me. I must say, I know our OP says in their final update that they didn't approve of this AITA story or its updates going out on other social media platforms. I did make sure to get the approval from our OP before we put it on our channel because for me, first and foremost, their safety is of the utmost importance. If anything, this is a very scary journey. I know one of the reasons why OP, at least based on the comments, wanted to leave so badly is because my understanding is the way that child support services work down there. If there's no family that you have in that country and no parent available, if those children had been taken away it probably would have been to Astrid and Morton because they had the most time with those children. That makes sense just because of how they were trying to impose themselves on the daughter, take pictures of her. Make it look as if she's being neglected and then trying to badmouth her to all the neighbors. That's a very scary situation. I am extremely glad that they are safe. Protect yourself and your children. I can just hope for Morton and Astrid that they go get the help they severely need. That and all the people associated with them because that's a mess. Well, let's go ahead and go to our next story and see what you think about this one. Am I the a-hole for calling off my wedding because I discovered something? Hi. Hey. Female 28 here. 
got engaged last year with my ex-boyfriend of more than 10 years. We never lived together, but I think I can confidently say that I know him, or so I thought. Turns out, he is in so much debt with the bank and tons of cash loan applications. The reason? He is addicted to online gambling, Casino Plus, Bingo Plus, and more. I know that he is playing casino online, but I never thought that he is already addicted to the point of needing to apply for loans just so he can play. Am I wrong for immediately calling off the wedding? For context, I came from a family where debt and gambling has always been a problem, so I promised myself that I want to get out of this situation. My friends are telling me to try and fix things first and help him with his problems instead of leaving him. What do you guys think? Am I the a-hole? Okay. Well, it sounds like what we have here is a couple that's been together for 10 years? Yes. And she says that her boyfriend, she just recently discovered, has a pretty severe gambling addiction and has put himself into quite a hole that I guess she didn't really have an understanding of till recently. That's very scary to be with someone for 10 years and not know that side of it, unless he's really good about hiding a big piece of his life. I don't think they live together, right? No. Okay, well, maybe that's a way they were able to sidestep that. I definitely suggest, though, before you get married with someone, try living with them for a little bit. Because the way someone acts when the door's shut at the end of the night is completely different than when you see them out on dates that are planned and, you know, little sleepovers you have on a Friday and Saturday. Those are completely different worlds. I don't want to leave the dating honeymoon phase, though. You definitely should. Don't just hop into things. I understand old values. And if you want to live like that, you can. But my biggest suggestion to people, if you ever get into the point where you're past the dating phase and you're really looking at someone seriously, the next step would definitely be moving in with them. It's a lot harder to hide who you are. Um, You can definitely get to see people for who they are before you make a big decision like marriage. My question is, because she does say they have been in a relationship for 10 years, I'm certain they love each other because they are talking about getting married. There's plans. So she did say yes to a proposal, I assume. Was there any attempt at getting him help? Our OP doesn't allude to anything such as that. All right. Well, I guess I have to say this. You don't owe someone a relationship. For whatever reasonings you have for not getting married, those are your own and I don't have a right to judge them. However, if you're not attempting to help your partner, which this is your partner, you've been together for 10 years. I understand you don't live together, but you both invested a lot in each other. Emotionally anyway, obviously not monetarily because now you're figuring this part out. I understand your fear about it and because it runs in your family and how you've been exposed to it and your experiences of it. I can get that. I can appreciate that. But if you're telling me as a partner that you're not willing to at least see if there can be something at the end of the tunnel through help. Now, again, you don't owe him a relationship, but some understanding and some kindness. We're talking about an addiction and gambling is definitely a pretty hardcore addiction. You're not the a-hole. The consensus on Reddit is ROP is not the a-hole. And I think a lot of people stem to our OP doesn't owe a relationship to someone who has this addiction. And let me go ahead and read a couple commenters. So the first one said, my father gambled away millions of dollars. He took loans out of the house so much that six years after his death, we are still finding out the damage he did to us. You will never fix him. You will live your entire life in debt and covering for him. Get out. Love does not conquer this addiction. I can understand the experience that this poster has led for us, but saying that there's no way out is... I think it's only because they were left with all of this. And I can understand that. But and it is to say so that is for every single person on earth, just because you have a vice is, I think, short-sighted. I understand the the advice because they're living through the fallout of it. I can get that. But not every person is that person. You are not your vices. Just because someone's in a hole doesn't mean they can't climb out, but they need the help. I understand when you've gone too far because her situation, you just heard it. He left them in debt beyond his years. That's terrible. I'm sorry for that. But if you can't see that not everyone is your father and that they are worth saving, that's a problem. Maybe I'm being too 
in my emotions right now about that. I've got mixed feelings on this personally. I understand what addiction can do. I think not trying to help someone that I care for, that I truly love and have spent time with them, when I find out about it, I can understand not wanting to marry them. Yes. You don't want to tie all of that together. I get that. Protect yourself financially and your future. Uh, I think one of the best things that I read when it came to commenters is sometimes love is blind, but it doesn't have to be stupid. Sure. And I agree with that. But I guess all I'm trying to say is if you're not willing to flip over the rock to try to help the person you love just once, I'm not saying repeatedly make the same mistakes and accept that they're gambling away all of your money and your financial security over the next decade. You know, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is to not give someone the chance to help themselves. That's a little much. I grew up with addiction surrounding me, but I never looked at someone as too far gone if they were willing to try. And that's where, I don't know, some kindness needs to be put there. And I get it though. Everyone is correct. I'm not saying they're wrong. Protect yourself. I get that. Financial ruin is, no one wants to deal with that. I'm just in my feels. That's what this is. (laughs) (laughs) I'm saying you're correct and I agree with you, but I think it's a little short-sighted to believe that everyone's lost just because it affected you. I've been a part of that train too. And it took me a long time to not put my father in other people's situations. That you can climb out from the ruin that you create, but you do need people around you that love and support you through it too. Yes. And they don't have to also be down in that same hole. If, and I think this is one of the key things that I've always thought about when it came to anyone with addictions. If you see that someone's in a hole and you're trying to help them out of that hole, but then you find rather than them trying to pull themselves out, they're trying to pull you in. That's when you know you need to just let go. Yes. But to not be there to help and to assume that everyone from the get-go cannot get the help and get better, I think is wrong. But you got to start looking at life a little different. Not everyone is your situation. Well, I agree with you, Tim Stradamus. I think our experience there is probably... It's a too much. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. Too many feels again. Let's go to our next story then. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter to find another place to live because she's pregnant again? My 49 female daughter, Josie, 19, had her first baby when she was 15. My husband and I were devastated at first because we knew this was going to be a very difficult path for our daughter. We did all we could to give her sex education, but it wasn't enough, and we couldn't turn back time, so all we could do was support her in what she wanted to do. My husband and I helped Josie take care of our grandson and encouraged her to finish high school. She never did because she said her priority was being a mother and she didn't have time to invest into finishing high school. We told her she would either go to school or get a job, but we weren't going to give her the option of doing neither for more than a year after she gave birth. So she got a part-time job at a hair salon. The father of my grandson, who was her age, would give her about $100 a month for baby-related stuff and would come over every couple of months to see his son, but that was all he did, although he lived in the same city as his son. A few days ago, Josie broke the news to us that she's pregnant again. The father is the same boy who got her pregnant the first time. My husband and I were pissed. How can she get pregnant by that boy for the second time when he was very obviously not consistent or helpful with the first baby? And with Josie living with us rent-free and us having to take care of my grandson for her so she can go work, go out, etc., this does not seem fair at all that she can add another baby into this mess. After a few days of thinking about it and discussing it with my husband, We decided to tell Josie to move in with the father of her children and raise the children together. She said they're not in a relationship, so they can't live together, and they wouldn't be able to afford it anyway. I told her she needs to figure something out because we, my husband and I, are not willing to raise another baby for her. She said, you're never satisfied with anything I do. You told me to get a job, so I did, and now you're complaining that you had to raise the baby. You wouldn't have had to if I didn't have to work. I can't do both things at once, and I definitely can't raise two kids on my own and work. 
What 19-year-old can do that? I replied, we tried to teach you how to be responsible after your first baby, and we did all we could to be there for you. You clearly haven't learned a thing, and it's not our job to keep picking up after you. So before your baby arrives, discuss living arrangements with the father and figure something out. She has been crying and not talking to us since. She's called both sets of her grandparents to speak to my husband and I and change our minds so we can help her raise her babies. My husband's parents think we're being very harsh and punishing her for something that's already happened, which isn't helpful. They offered to take Josie and our grandson in, but Josie doesn't want to take her kids so far away from their dad. My in-laws are saying we'll regret abandoning our daughter and that we should be showing her a better example of unconditional love. I just don't know what more we could do without sacrificing our own lives. Am I the a-hole? All right, let's do this. We have a couple here that has been dealing with the fact that their 15-year-old daughter got pregnant. And I don't agree with giving the ultimatum of school or work. It should have definitely been you're completing school. I don't know what country they're living in, but that makes it extremely hard to move forward in life. Especially, Not without an education. Especially today. So they gave her the ultimatum. She takes getting a job, a part-time. And essentially what it ended up turning into was grandparents are now the parent of their kid's kid. That's an issue. Because what ended up happening was your daughter never learned responsibility. She just did what you told her to do. She never learned from the lesson, which we fast forward four years into the future. At 19, she gets pregnant again. And it's from the same dude that got her pregnant when she was 15. We didn't learn any lessons. Um, But the good thing is, they're both 19. Yes, it's going to be hard. In my mind, as the grandparents in this situation, you don't owe your daughter a lifetime supply of childcare. You shouldn't be raising both her children. And her attitude towards this whole thing shows she believes that you should be giving her kids care because obviously she can't raise kids and have a job. There's a lot of, (laughs) a lot of people who had kids very young. Is it difficult? Oh, oh yeah. Hands down, but you can, but, and you'll learn and it'll be the lessons you need to learn just because you have a kid when you're young doesn't mean life's over. I think it's more than acceptable to tell your daughter that, she needs to start figuring out life. $100 a month for child support. And don't get me wrong. We're talking about 15-year-olds. They're not ready to be parents. But I, now, now they're 19. Still Is the same still situation. Is $100 a month? Yeah. Is he still coming to see his son every couple of months? Oh, I've got words on this, but uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. OP, you're not the a-hole. Don't throw her out. There needs to be a plan put in place. Your daughter is 19. We are dealing with the economy we are in today. It's not as easy as just saying, pick a place and rent it. What I would say is you need to legally start getting in place where the father is paying for child support. Well, let's start with that because just throwing her out isn't, in my mind, that isn't acceptable. Well, I mean, if the boyfriend does have his own place. And if he does. And if she is continuously boinking him. It sounds like know a relationship those things. to Does me. he have a place or is he living at home? I don't I don't know the breadth of their situation. I don't know it in great detail as that, but they got a place. What I am saying, though, is just make sure you get some things in place so that way when she does get on her own, you're not making her choose between a rock and a hard place. I get it. She put herself there, but just take a beat. And get everything in place. Well, the consensus on Reddit, let me just provide that, is our OP's not the a-hole. And a lot of commenters had harsh reality checks when it came to all of this. I also side with this kind of view. I understand when someone who's young has had a child and how difficult that is. I had our son when I was relatively young. I come back to this and I see many things that are a glaring problem in the relationship between OP and her daughter and how OP daughter sees the world. Let me go ahead and highlight what commenters have pointed out first before I go into my viewpoints on this. Our Redditors were saying, you know, OP, you did you did by your daughter. You stayed by her side. You helped her. You gave her choices to try and better herself. Yeah, it wasn't the educational part, but you know, she got into the workforce. At least it's something. It's somewhere for someone to build. 
You didn't just let her waste her life away. The second time, it's not OP's job to adult for her adult daughter, and it should no longer be on onus to OP anymore. Some said, OP, your daughter is taking advantage of you at this point. And it's really gross how it's coming across if she argues that because you're watching the children while she's working, that's your choice. She can either do one or the other. Another Redditor, I think, said it in such a perfect way. And I agree with this fullheartedly. Unconditional love does not mean enabling her to be dependent on you. It's very true. I cannot tell you how much I agree with this statement. I think OP is a very loving mom to be beside her daughter. Yes, making her daughter choose to work or to go to school. Man, I would have pushed for school. A hundred percent. Build your life. You have this chance. I get they gave her the choice. That's important. You got to have choice. But (laughs) she was 15. I wouldn't have left that in a child's hands. Because a child had a child. That's not a game plan for moving forward. Her making minimum wage at whatever part-time job she got, was that really going to pay for anything going forward? Was she ever going to make enough money to live on her own without having to depend on really immoral things? Yes, it's still on the 15-year-old for getting pregnant. I am not absolving her from the choices she made. But what I am saying is some of it does fall on our parents here. I think for me, another glaringly bad point is the daughter's boyfriend. (laughs) Oh boy. How can you say you are not in a relationship with someone who boinks you to the point where you have a second kid five years later? You are in a relationship. Otherwise, don't. I'm very shocked that after dealing with the struggle that our 15-year-old daughter went through, that at 19, (laughs) she goes back to the well for a second try. $100 every month. $100 every month doesn't pay for diapers properly for a baby. I know this. Struggled. I have been there. $100 every month. And this daughter's boyfriend only seen her, their kid, sorry, their kid every couple of months. Man, I can just slap my hand right through my head because I'm like, that is not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. He lives in the same town. Our OP's daughter's argument here was that I have to live with you, mom and dad, because how is he going to see his son apparently every couple of months? If you have grandparents that are willing and want to apparently deal with it, because at this point, I understand OP not wanting to. Sure. She's already dealt with it for five years. I get it. I understand that frustration. You are hoping to raise your child so that they can make responsible choices. And yes, there are accidents that do happen. There are consequences to your actions. And I get understanding to make decisions that arrive from a place of compassion. But there's a difference between making a choice or a decision on a place of compassion and then having that compassion be abused. Because that's all that I see here. It doesn't sound like for the last five years since our OP's daughter has been under their roof that she's had to do anything other than work and take care of that baby. And even then, it looks like her OP still gave her daughter enough chances to go out and do more than that because, as I said, she's got a second now. Yeah. All I will say is I can just hope that they definitely go. I'm not sure what country they're in, but you definitely need to go seek a proper child support agreement. $100 a month isn't going to do it. And if they are not in a relationship, he definitely still needs to be taking responsibility for what he's done as well. Well, let's go on to our next story and see about this wedding. Am I the a-hole for not letting my niece be the flower girl at my wedding? I, 25 female, am getting married next month. My brother and sister-in-law have a five-year-old daughter, Emma. They assumed Emma would automatically be flower girl in my wedding. The issue is that I have asked my best friend's daughter, Hannah, six female, to be the flower girl instead. Hannah's mom is my maid of honor, and she's like family to me. When I told my brother and sister-in-law that Hannah will be the flower girl, they got really upset. They said I'm choosing friends over family and breaking their little girl's heart for not giving her this special role. 
I tried to explain that I've known Hannah her whole life too, and it's a sweet full circle moment to have her in the wedding. We have a very special connection that I don't have with Emma, even though I love Emma too. But my brother said I'm a selfish aunt and setting a bad precedent in our family. Now they don't want Emma involved at all. My parents think I should just let both girls be flower girls to keep the peace, which I thought was a cool idea and I initially didn't think of that. When I told my brother and sister-in-law that this would be great, they declined and said they don't want her to do it anymore at all. Am I the a-hole? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. That's too loud. Please keep that. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> you are definitely not the a-hole, OP. It is your wedding. You're allowed to invite, uninvite, give positions to people, not give positions to people as much as you want. Your brother is almost strong arming his position in the family as your brother to get what he wants. That's really weird. You already say it though. You have a close bond with your best friend and you're letting her daughter, Emma, be your flower girl. End of story. And as your family member, I would have definitely understood that and been more than happy for our daughter not to participate in being the flower girl. Or in this case, they even came up with a compromise and said, how about both of them? And then you still double down on it and go, if it's not solely her, we don't want it. That is a very selfish love. Two people uninvited. I guess this is a really good learning experience, though. You cannot make everyone happy. So in my opinion, OP, like I already stated, you are definitely not the a-hole. Stick with your decision, though. They don't see life like that. It's all or nothing, baby. Ride or die. Well, the family. <laughs> <laughs> Fast and furious. <laughs> So the consensus on Reddit is our OP is definitely not the a-hole. Let me just go ahead and say from the comment section, our OP said they never initially thought to have both girls as flower girls. When this came up, they were extremely ecstatic about it. It was after they brought it up with the brother and the sister-in-law that apparently they snubbed their nose and was like, no. How dare you? I have, right? Now, let me go ahead and read a top commenter that I think brings up a really good point that doesn't get brought up very often. Not the a-hole. I hate the keep the peace bullying. It only means your feelings mean nothing and the other party's feelings mean everything. The suggestion of two flower girls was fine until the to keep the peace crap. Your brother was out of line trying to dictate who should be in your wedding party. And his little temper tantrum now is even more out of line. My suggestion is to stop trying to smooth anything over. You did nothing wrong. You don't owe him any apology. You don't have to go running after him, begging him to keep your niece in the wedding or for them to come or anything. Just say, well, sorry you feel that way and continue on with your wedding. As for anyone else trying to push this, tell them they made their choice. Leave it alone. You cannot make everyone happy. I agree. And I hope that OP truly listens to that. If anything, this post got a bunch of likes on it. This exact Reddit commenter, because I think a lot of people don't put enough precedence on keep the peace mentality is very destructive. Oh, 100%. But you know what I would have done in this whole thing? Had they come at me like that? You would have insisted to be the flower girl. <laughs> well, outside of that, <laughs> I'd have been like, um, boys, can I get the, the list of who's doing what? Oh, yes, here. Checks list. Is her name Emma? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. Like, it's, it's really easy. And if you're offended by that, then you have to do the soul searching. You don't know how to take no. And that's a problem. That's very true. There's a lot of people that can't take no for an answer. Well, I hope that wedding is fantastical. Let's go to our next story and see about names. Am I the a-hole for how I responded to my fiance refusing to hyphenate his name? My 24 female fiance, 29 male, are planning to get married in the next couple years. We're realistic people and understand that arguments are normal in relationships. But recently, we started applying for our marriage license, and the topic of last names came up. I said that I wanted both of us to hyphenate so we have matching last names. 
The reason why is because my last name is important to me, as I'm the last one in my family with my name. My partner wasn't comfortable taking my last name, which I understood, but doesn't want to hyphenate his name. I asked him to clarify, thinking he didn't want our names to change, but he told me the woman hyphenates her name, not the man. I was confused and clarified that we should both hyphenate, and he refused, saying that's not how it works. I asked him to think about it, as it was slightly important to me that we have matching last names. Here's where I think I turned into the a-hole. This morning, fiancé asked to talk and said he was not changing his name as it made zero sense for him to, and my name wasn't really going to change when I did hyphenate. I was pretty upset, but left it alone. Later in the day, I spoke with him and said that I understand his point of view, but since we couldn't come to an agreement as to matching names, I would just keep my last name as it is now. He got upset with me and said I was being obtuse, that I know that's not how it works and we wouldn't be considered married if I didn't hyphenate. I argued that this was the best case scenario as we couldn't come to a solution that we are both comfortable with. We're trying to be civil, but it's becoming a sore subject, and we don't want to fill out paperwork while this is hanging above us. So, Reddit, am I the a-hole for threatening to keep my last name as is? Edit, I'm adding this because it keeps popping up in the comments. He was raised Christian, and his parents are from America. All the women in his family have taken their husbands' names. I was born here and raised Catholic, but my family is Hispanic and migrated here when my mom was 14. Nobody in my family really changed names, but it led to problems like picking up kids from school because everyone had different last names. Despite our upbringings, neither of us are religious whatsoever, and we both have similar views on politics and such. Also to note, he said the word threatening, not me. I put it in the post because of what he said. Am I the a-hole? Okay. So we definitely have a clash of values. And even though they're not partaking in anything religious now, because she does explain it, they're not really. Because she grew up Catholic. He grew up Christian. He clearly wants you to take his last name. He does not want to hyphenate his. You know that's where he stands. And you, on the other hand, want to hyphenate and keep your last name. I can respect that. So in my mind, I guess I'll say it like this. There are no a hills Because you guys have done what we say all the time on this channel. Communicate. And be honest, because that is important. Going forward, you both know how each other feels. Definitely get to the bottom of it, obviously. If you can't compromise at all, then at least going forward, you both know where each other's mindsets are. The one thing I don't like that was said, I think, was, well, it's not an official marriage if you don't share the last name. There are a lot of people who are married that do not share the same last names because of this. There are certain things in life with your partner that you will agree to disagree on. And this one is a perfect case. As long as you both agree to disagree. You can't do this whole like when now the fiance is hearing that she's not going to take his last name. Be upset about that. And you have to respect that in each other. I get tickled by this type of situation because it depends on how far you're willing to let the little things become the big things. And if you're willing to let something as small as a name come between someone you love. then that's what's just going to happen in your life. So none of you are the a-hole. Definitely be okay with agreeing to disagree. I like that. Those are wise words. Well, the consensus on Reddit was that our OP is not the a-hole. At least not for how they responded. They said, essentially, our OP had a very civil conversation. And many Redditors actually put out a lot of advice regarding names and the merging of families. But let me go ahead and read to you this update, which I think clears a lot of things. Come on. Thank you to everyone who commented their thoughts and judgment. I'm sorry it took me so long, but I have an update. Right after the post was made, we had a death in my family. We've both been grieving and giving each other space and grace. Recently, we sat down to pay bills like we do every month, and I asked if we could talk. He said, sure. And I brought up the last name argument and how I felt it went unresolved slash had sour feelings remaining. He agreed that it didn't end properly, so we talked. Like all the comments suggested, I dove right in and asked why he had such a problem with me keeping my name. 
He immediately apologized and admitted he overreacted and acted like a child, even apologized for calling me obtuse and sad that it wasn't appropriate to call me names no matter what. He said he wasn't sure why it bothered him, knowing how important my name is to me, and he didn't communicate that very well. He told me it was 100% my choice if I wanted to keep my name and that his opinion didn't matter. I then asked about his that's how it works comment, and it turns out this one had a little more reasoning. Turns out, because of the previous mentioned passing of the family member, who was ill at the time the argument took place, he had more contact with his family than he usually tolerates, and you can probably guess where I'm going with this. He had a little birdie on his shoulder telling him that women always take the last name. Not sure who, but I have a couple guesses. He usually is pretty resistant to this kind of blabbering from his side, but emotions were already high. He once again apologized, even saying he was a major jackass, as I'm not his property. Basically, in general, he apologized for being a jerk and would support whatever I want to do. We did talk a little more and establish how we would discuss frustrating things in the future and about healthy communication and ended on a very positive note. Now, what I'm sure everyone is wondering what I'm going to end up doing. A couple comments mentioned how some people replace their middle names with their old last names, and I really loved the idea. So that's what I'm going to do, as it was the option that I was happiest with. We get matching last names, and I get to keep the last name that was so important to me. Once again, thank you everyone that commented and gave their two cents. Now, I must say that made me really happy because Tim Stradamus, that's exactly what I did with you. I wanted to keep my father's last name because I am the last such and such of the family. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be a part of the Tim Stradamus family. In my mind, it was for me a new page in my book when you and I got married. I wanted to make sure that I was Mrs. Timstradamus. And I still didn't want to lose that little family part of me that, for me, was my father's side of the family, was, to me, still a core of my identity. So to move it to my middle name, and I really didn't care about my middle name anyway, <laughs> made me really happy. We definitely had those conversations and we worked it out. Yeah, because I even think at one point I asked if you would hyphenate your name and you already have a very long <laughs> name <laughs> to add another one to the Big mix. one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but we were always open to having the conversation. That's what the important part of it is. Is And it sounds like they are too. You know, I'm happy they didn't let the name get the better of them. I know for some people, though, it's it's hard. I find it funny when it comes to you saying that for some people, it's hard to understand that. Because I would like to read one comment and the interaction from our OP. So this one comment said in response to the update, so the compromise you were happiest with was him not compromising at all. You giving up your middle name and not keeping your family name in a way that would be passed down at all. How did he manage to convince you that was any sort of compromise? That's wild. Our OP responded and said he didn't. I sat and thought about that option and really liked it. I'm not attached to my middle name whatsoever. Actually happy to be rid of it as it's a little old fashioned. And I'm able to keep the last name with me while still having matching names with him. After thinking about it, I realized I was more upset about me specifically losing the name versus passing it down. How the conversation went was he told me why the situation bothered him and then at the end, I revealed what I had decided, so zero convincing from his side really happened. I think, for me, this made me giggle. For a lot of people, they don't understand it. They believe changing any part of themselves at all means that they are changing all of themselves. They've compromised the entire thing. I giggled, because you can hear the OP said she didn't need to be convinced in any way, shape, or form. She was given these options by other Redditors in the world that have had similar situations. This is what made them most happy, the same as it made me most happy. I had absolutely no ties to my middle name. It was a little unique, but nothing emotional that I really had to it. 
what I had was my emotional tie to my last name, which was for me, my last memory of my father and a way of keeping him with me. Not really of the family. It really was just about my father. So to have him live on in a name that I can say out loud and feel as if I'm just saying that little bit of hello to my dad means a lot to me. It didn't feel like a compromise. It felt like a gift. Well, that was a pretty good story, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's always good to see when people can come together. Let me go ahead and bring it back, though. No. (laughs) For our next story. Am I the a-hole for keeping my wife on a short leash after she cheated on me? Oh, there's a lot I want to say already. (laughs) (laughs) But continue, please. My 30 male wife, 31 female of five years, cheated on me last year with her friend when she was out with her friend group. She used to do this often, but always came back at around 12 a.m. But this time, she came home very late at around 5 a.m. and drunk, and I didn't press the issue that night. She was distant and didn't talk much to me afterwards the next few days. I only found out a couple days later when she confessed to cheating after I kept asking her why she was so cold to me. I was shocked. I never liked the fact that she went out to bars and clubs, but she never gave me a reason to distrust her until that night. I immediately grabbed a bag, packed some stuff, and left. She was begging me to talk about it, but I wasn't in the mood for it. I was angry, upset, sad. I know that I wasn't in the right headspace for this kind of talk, so I stayed with a friend. Fast forward a few days later, I agreed to talk to her. She said she was so sorry and would never happen again, and that she would do anything to make me stay. I spent the time I was away thinking of staying or leaving, and I hate the fact that I still love her. We don't have kids together, but part of me still wanted to stay. I gave her certain conditions if she wanted me to stay. The first one is to never see the man she cheated on me with ever again. The second was that I could see her phone or computer any time I wanted without having to ask. The last one was that she could no longer go out to clubs or bars without me. She agreed to all of this. Over the last year, she's been estranged from her friend group because she can't go out with them without seeing the man she cheated on me with. And she hasn't really made any new friends. I haven't checked her phone or computer either. I know she likes to go out, so I try my best to go with her when I have time. The bar and club scene was never my thing, but I try to enjoy it with her. Things haven't been the same as before, and I've thought losing the she-can't-go-without-me rule, but I keep thinking of what she did. I've explained this to my friend, and she said I should just divorce her if I can't trust her anymore. I've thought about it. I wasn't as happy as I used to be. She says she's happy with me around, but she isn't as energetic as she used to be. So... Am I the a-hole? So that you can understand the timeline, this was around four months ago when this was posted. Scandalous and should be eye-opening because what we have here now is a failure to be true to yourself and what you're willing to accept out of a relationship and the poisoning of a relationship. So we will talk about this one. OP has been in a five-year-long relationship? Yes. And just recently, about four months ago, his wife. Sorry, they've been married for five years. There's no clear indication of how long they've been together. Okay. And about four months ago, his wife cheated on him with a friend in her friend group that she goes to clubs with. Are they in their 30s? Yes. Okay. He's 30. She's 31. Now that we have that all outlined, the issue is not the fact that your wife cheated because- If you're going to cheat, you're going to cheat. There's one thing that Voice and I have always said. That's one thing neither of us will compromise on in our relationship. Infidelity is not the road we want to go down. And if you're feeling that way, if your heart's already gone, I would rather us have the hard truth than a soft lie. It's time to get a divorce and move on with our lives. (laughs) Don't take the other person down that path. You break the trust. You hurt each other. It's not worth it. 
very few couples have been able to sustainably and healthily build that bond back because unfortunately there'll always be that thing in the back of your head. What if? And that's poison to a relationship. If you can't trust someone, you shouldn't be with them. End of story, full stop, however you want to say it. Like I said, it wasn't the fact that your wife cheated. It was the fact that it sounds like against your values, you took her back. And then by you taking her back, you then became the a-hole because you put very destructive and toxic parameters for the rest of your relationship on her. I'm going to take your phone and I can look through your stuff at will call. I get to come with you to everything you do now, period. You can no longer do things, even if they're the club, which is still questionable. (laughs) That is what it is. Your happiness and your fun times is up to you. But you're taking those choices away. Once those choices are gone in a relationship, that's an issue. You became the monster that your wife was to you, just slower and over a longer period of time. Not all happening in one night, unfortunately. So both of you suck. You continued the hurt. I would definitely suggest... No, I'm not going to say get a divorce because that's completely up to you and your wife. Get into counseling, really learn what it means to trust again. And if you can't find that ground, then you need to leave. You going down the path you have, you've already put the poison in there. And it's really hard to heal from that. I've seen too many people go down the path where a partner cheated and they may say on the outside to everyone that they trust their partner and everything's great. But I would rather hurt immensely for someone I loved because I had to move on from them versus die a very slow and painful existence like that. Always having to worry, always having to pin my my wants to see your things. Like paranoia. It's incredibly destructive, not just to your partner, but to you as a person. <laughs> You'll change. It will change you. So OP, I hope people gave you constructive viewpoints here because I think it's very important for you right now. You're at the point where you said it, you don't have kids. So at least the collateral isn't as bad. It will still hurt. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. But you need to do the right thing for you and your wife, even if that means walking away from the relationship. Well, the consensus on Reddit was that our OP is not the a-hole. And I think they stem to it simply because the OP's wife did something heinous and this is just consequences to that. Now, I will read one commenter that they say it simply and it's essentially what you said, but... Let me go ahead and read it. Sorry, but your friend is right. Sounds like all the trust is gone and you're just diminishing each other now. Let her go. Not the a-hole. Now, I agree with you, Timster Thomas. Cheating is something you and I 100% see eye to eye on. It is not acceptable. I don't accept it in how other people do things. They can live their life. But based on my values, I don't understand how they can value themselves if they accept that in their lives. Now, as you remember, I said that this post was four months ago. Well, three months ago, our OP posted an update. So let me go ahead and read that. Thank you all for responding. It was a little overwhelming how much attention this post got. To clarify some things that were asked, our relationship before seemed pretty good. I was never the club or bar kind of person, But me and my wife enjoyed going out to different places. We were both very outdoorsy. We often went camping, climbing, hiking, among other things. We also liked taking trips around the country and sometimes abroad. We also had date nights once or twice a week. We both work from home, so we often had a good amount of free time. We aren't rich or anything, but we do fine. Also, to clarify something, we don't have kids and we don't want kids. When it came to our sex life, I think it was decent. We had sex three to four times a week and often tried new things, never with another person though. The only thing we didn't share was her habit of going out to bars and clubs and now to her friends. Some of you were under the impression I told her to see none of her friends. I only told her to stop seeing the man she cheated with. At first, I didn't know exactly why she became estranged with the whole group. They were all part of the friend group. I met all of her friends, including the man in question. From what I know about him, he was a man whore. Nothing happened between him and my wife before, but I never liked the fact she went out so often with this guy, even if it was in a group setting especially with alcohol involved. I did bring this up to her, 
and she told me there was nothing to worry about and that this was just insecurity talking, our relationship now. We've gone out hiking a few times and gone out together on dates, but not nearly as often anymore. I just haven't felt the desire to. Our sex life is pretty barren as well. She's tried to initiate plenty of times, but I rarely want to. The update. I've talked to my wife and we both reflected on our relationship. She still claims she wants to stay with me and would respect my conditions no matter what. I asked her what she would do if I let go of the conditions. She told me she's truly ashamed of what happened, and she said she probably wouldn't go to a club or bar alone anymore. I asked about her old friends, and she told me that she doesn't want to be their friend anymore. She told me that they thought she was being unreasonable for not wanting to see the guy anymore, and that's just how he is. Basically, they refused to cut the guy off, and they didn't like that my wife had a problem with him. I never asked her about this before because I didn't care about how my condition was met. All that I cared about was that it was met. I've opened up a bit more and how our life now is pretty dull. She said she's aware our relationship isn't the way it was before. I asked her if she wants things to change, but she said she doesn't feel that she has the right to ask me for anything. She said she's aware it's her fault our relationship is like this. I mentioned couples therapy and she immediately said that it was a good idea. I still resent her, but from what I can tell, she does want to make this work. I can't fully trust her yet. I still remember when she first said that there was nothing to worry about. We decided to start couples therapy. I'll be honest though, the only reason I'm willing to do this is because she has followed my conditions for a year, but I don't think this is going to help me trust her ever again. If therapy doesn't work, then I'll leave. The fact that the conditions exist is the issue. It already shows that there's never going to be trust. That's what I was trying to say earlier is you're doing yourself and your wife a disservice here. You can't live with conditions. <laughs> it's not healthy. And for her to have the mindset she does means she's still not healing from what happened, right? I deserve this punishment. I get it. Cheating and we've said this. It's terrible and you shouldn't do it. But once it's done, once it's been had, you need to learn how to move on with yourself. You and cannot learn from it. Yes. You cannot continue to repeat the punishment. You will change as a person. She's in this rut where she's going, I'm going to do everything you tell me to. How long will that mindset stay until it begins to erode the relationship and she starts having the resentment? Your relationship's already over. Well, let me go ahead and there were a few Redditors that really had questions on the friend group and their apparent flippant response to it being that's just the way he is. So ROP responded and said, as far as I know, only one of the girls besides my wife was in a serious relationship. She mentioned him hitting on all the girls in the group and was constantly trying to pick up women at clubs and bars they all went to. Besides that, I don't know much else. I'm not exactly keen on knowing the details of this guy's sex life. So, the original post was four months ago. The update was three months ago. Now let me give you another update from two weeks ago. Our OP says, It's been a while after my last update and lots of things happened since. Me and my wife have been in therapy for the past few months. It took us a couple of tries to find someone we were both comfortable with. We both completely laid our feelings out. We talked about why she cheated, and honestly, it was very hard to hear. Basically, she was simply curious. She simply wondered what made the guy she cheated with special. Apparently, he slept with another woman in the friend group and she talked about to my wife and she got really curious. The alcohol did the rest. She mentioned regret setting as soon as she got back to her senses. As for me, my conditions were to help me feel more secure, but also they were a way for me to punish my wife. After some sessions, I just can't trust my wife anymore. I realized this when I told her she made my worst fears real. She fought the guy I was insecure about. We're going through with divorce. Besides some finances, there's not much to do. 
We don't own any property together. We're both capable of living without alimony. I think we've already divorced some time ago. We're just making it official. Good on you, OP. Not all cages have bars, and that's what you were both doing to each other. By you having those things, it's it's good that he got to see that by having those parameters in place, that not only was he caging her, but caging himself. Well, let me go ahead and bring it back, because that got too serious again. <laughs> I'm just putting us on this roller coaster, aren't I? There's been some very confounding stories that you've picked so far. Good. I am hoping that the food for thought is really working its way today. It's killing me. Well, let's go to our next story. Am I the a-hole for eating all my pregnant wife's pickles and refusing to go buy more, even though she's craving them badly? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess around with pickles and cravings. <laughs> I love pickles, so yeah. I need help. I, 28 male, hosted a work lunch where the main food was sub sandwiches, homemade. My wife, 27 female, is five months pregnant and craves all pickles, butter, garlic, dill, kosher, mini, etc. You name it, she craves it. Due to this extensive craving, which is understandable, I guess, we have several jars of varied pickles. I used one jar of dill pickles for the sub sandwiches, which are her favorite, but still left over seven jars of varying types of pickles. After the lunch was finished, she confronted me about eating all of her dill pickles and demanded I go buy more. I argued that I only used one jar and never host anything as this was our first house and we had just fully settled in after moving out of my parents' finished basement. And she told me that I should have asked her first and that I was a bitch for eating her pickles. I told her she was being unreasonable and refused to buy her more until she finished all seven jars of pickles we still have and have had for months. Some are not opened. She threatened me with divorce and did not speak to me for three days until her ankles were swollen to get her shoes on by herself. Please help. Am I the a-hole? If yes, I will apologize and buy four jars of her favorite dill pickles. If not, we may get the divorce, although this threat was likely due to her spiked hormones. What a wild story. So initially, I thought this was a good, fun, hey-ha type story. So we got near the end and he said they've basically been ignoring each other for three days. That is not how you conflict manage. I would say both y'all suck in this manner because I can understand cravings. Uh, but obviously I cannot understand it from a pregnant woman's perspective. So she really, really wanted some dill pickles. I can full heartedly understand that. Voices, cravings for pickles run up and down too. And she's oh, not pregnant. <laughs> I have a craving monster and it is all over the place when it comes to pickly things and sweet things. Whew. You know, and that's how you try to hear your partner out, especially when you eat their favorite snack or what they've been saving or whatnot that's in the fridge that she knows where it's at. Don't touch my shit when I tell you not to. <laughs> <laughs> it's real simple. <laughs> you can touch everything else. I don't mind that. But when I say don't touch these pickles. But that's where I thought that this was coming at it from where she was being innocently going, hey, I really want those dill pickles. It stopped being innocent when I guess he says she calls him a bitch. Why would that be acceptable? I don't get it. And I hope it was in a fun and joking way. But based off of her reaction of basically not talking for three days after that, I don't think this was coming from a jokey, fun situation. I think this was coming from, I'm going to disrespect you because I felt disrespected. So what you're doing is you're creating catalysts and that's bad. I don't care that you were five months into your pregnancy. If there was a conflict that happened, resolving it by demeaning and disrespecting your partner doesn't make sense. There's other ways to have accomplished what you wanted. So now we have a back and a forth. Who gives in? These sound like not a new couple, but it sounds like they're about to get into parenthood. I don't hear where they have a child already. I hear that they're having one on the way. They just moved out of one of their parents' finished basements. So we're starting the next leg and starting to create values for what life looks like for you two. So who's going to give in? Because it sounds like you've dug in, both of you, three days without talking to each other until she got to the point where her ankles were swollen and she needed help putting her shoes on. It already sounds like you two need to work on the communication. Please do it before the kid gets there. It's going to take time. It doesn't happen overnight, but you can see where there's already 
disconnect because we're simply talking about dill pickles. That's what this came down to was the fact that the husband was like, hey, there's six others in this fridge and you're getting upset about the one I used for a party. Now, he could have definitely just gone out and picked up some dill pickles. (laughs) Which he should have. I don't know where it started, but it sounded like attitudes got involved. I think it started from... Honestly, our OP arguing back when she said, replace my dill pickles. If she's just yelling straight off and we're getting into that, there's not a lot of people that will deal with being yelled at and demanded very well. That's true. Regardless of being pregnant or not, when you start a conversation and you're already at 10, you're playing with, well, wait a second. If you're not going to respect me from the start, then I'm not going to respect you. Right. That's how a lot of people communicate. And then you're not going to get anything out of that conversation. You went three days without talking to your your wife who's pregnant until she had to give in, have you help her put on her shoes so she can, I guess, go to the store to get the pickle she wanted. Hey, I'm still angry at you, but I need my shoes on. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Come on with that. It's so silly to have that. Again, you both need to go get into some type of counseling to learn how to communicate when you're not getting what you want. There are better ways to go about it. So it just sounds like the both of y'all suck. I get how he does suck for not getting the pickles. I get that. The thing is, if you do get what you want from that situation, let's say for sake of argument, he goes, aye, aye, captain. As his wife, are you going to feel good when he comes back and gives you the pickles? Would that situation panned out the way you wanted it? No, it would have made me feel bad. I would have looked at those pickles and been like, God, I was such a, a douche now for you don't asking want them. like that. So no one wins. Unless you're one of those kinds of people that relish it. And, there are some. And you some. might, Oof. but as far as a... A relationship standpoint is concerned in this one, you both suck. You definitely need to work on the communication. You got a kid on the way. You owe it to each other. Don't conflict the void. Don't ignore each other for three days until your wife finally has you strap on her shoes for her. So like, if I'm wrong, guys, I will get four jars of pickles. (laughs) I'm like, oh, you should have just said you're going to get four jars of pickle right then and there. Why are you doing it now? Again, I think it was probably because of the way she he got approached from it. I can see that, though, because... I don't handle things nicely if somebody doesn't come up to me nicely. You got to respect your partners. They're your partners. Sometimes we fall in this rut of... It's not just partners. It's anybody. Whether it's work, whether it's friends, you need to speak with people with respect. But a lot of people end up treating other people outside of their relationship better than they do their own partners. I guess that's true too. They get caught up into that and you have to be aware of it. So here, please respect each other. I don't know how she went about it, but it doesn't make it right just because she's pregnant. And it doesn't make it right for him to have annied up and went, by the way, that ain't happening. You ended up costing three days for absolutely nothing. Learn how to speak to each other with respect. So the consensus on Reddit. Redditors came out and said, he's the a-hole. And a lot of them stemmed from, you touched something that you know wasn't for you. (laughs) And you didn't replace it. Bad on you. You didn't replace it for three days. And now you're coming on to Reddit? A lot of people called it all just extremely petty. In fact, one of the Redditors really made me laugh when they said this was a dill to (laughs) high. Dill to high. It's like your third one. (laughs) It's the punchline. You got this. In fact, there was a Redditor that really made me. You're already smiling too hard. Sorry. All right. (laughs) In fact, there was a Redditor that really made me smile when they said, this is one hell of a dill to die on. Just for all of our listeners out there, I kept... Oh, I'm going to leave that in. Messing all of that up. Yeah, I'm leaving that in. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so bad. Dil- d- oh. A dill to die on. <laughs> That's the right way. A dill to die on. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, this is a classic story for me of... Someone taking food from a pregnant lady that's craving stuff. So I wanted to go ahead and find a story that sort of reflects the other way. And let's go into our next story and see what you think about this one. Am I the a-hole for ruining the rice that my boyfriend cooks by consolidating the multiple bags of rice which he claims are different into a single container? I, 26 female, moved in with my boyfriend, 23 male, earlier this year. He is kind of disorganized, so I tend to have to tidy things up a lot. He often complains that I misplace his things, but it's really just his lack of organization more than anything. 
He keeps telling me to stop moving his things around, but we live here together, so I don't see why I should stop doing that. Anyway, he happens to be the one who does most of the cooking, and I'd say he's pretty good at it. One thing that does bother me is that he keeps multiple huge bags of rice in the kitchen, which he claims are different types of rice. But I looked at them, and they're all just the same white rice. I told him that he should put it in a proper container, but he insists that it's just fine the way it is. The thing is, I don't think that it's fine the way it is. So yesterday, I decided to consolidate all of the rice by getting a huge tub to put all the rice in. I dumped all three bags in there and put it in the pantry. When I texted my boyfriend and told him where I put the rice, he completely freaked out and said that I ruined the rice. He texted that I can't just mix basmati rice with jasmine rice, but it's all just white rice. I don't see how it's any less edible. When he came home, he just started yelling at me, and it was really hurtful because I was doing him a favor. Am I the a-hole here? Emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I, this is what I was waiting for in this story was her, because she's like, they're all the same rice. It's all white rice. And I'm like, okay, does it actually say the same names on each one of these bags? But when she clarifies that it's jasmine and it's basmati, they're different rices. And by you mixing them, rice cooks at different uh, temperatures, lengths, water. Like There's whole ecosystems for how to cook rice. Oh, yes. I've had to learn this because <laughs> I've ruined a lot of rice. Um, and I've had to fix a lot of rice. Voice can fix anything. <laughs> but Thank you. At least when it comes to rice. You dumped them all in one container? All of them. And then called it a day after yeah. not having a real conversation with your boyfriend. Because she just moves in, right? This is like a recent thing for their relationship. They just said it earlier this year. Okay. You do suck for not listening and not taking into account what your boyfriend wanted out of those bags of rice which was not to mix them all. The desecration. That does make you an a-hole, but I guess I don't like the whole coming home and yelling. Man, there's better ways to go about life. You're allowed to have your anger, I guess, if that's how you want to express your emotions with your partner. But the yelling at you, what did it accomplish? You both suck. <laughs> and I understand that she sucks for doing it. I know what I'm going to hear people say. She sucks first. But he also sucks. But yeah, I can see that. Y'all got to... Every All these things. You just got to learn how to communicate. Because I guess what she says is all he tells me throughout this entire period is that that's exactly what he wants done with the rice. Keep it there. But if he had just explained that, hey, by the way, this is jasmine rice. So the thing is, oh, no. in her post, she actually says he claims are different types of rice before she did it. Oh, no. So she knew. <laughs> she didn't believe him. He claims <laughs> emotional damage <laughs> <laughs> i had to go back to check my notes because i was oh, like wait a minute did right. she? so that undoes it by you doing what you did and not listening to him and, and what he was trying to teach you you are an a-hole now the consensus on reddit you're the a-hole yeah <laughs> <laughs> in fact oh the desecration i'm telling you so many people were upset they were like he told you that they were different and in fact more people came out and said, it is different. Very. They are different rices. They cook at different times with different waters, different temperatures. It's absolutely crazy that you would think that it is okay to do that. And in fact, more people came out and said, the way that you write, one, you say that he's disorganized and that you tidy things up, but that in fact, he says that you've misplaced a lot of his stuff means that you don't listen to anything that he has to say. That rather than finding a compromised way of living together, because now you guys are living together, it's your deciding to do things. And your way is apparently the right way, which is an awful way to have somebody live because it means you're not living together. It means you're living with him and you're ruling over him. To claim that someone is disorganized, Tim Stradamus knows me. I have a love for a chaotic organization. For me, there's a pattern in it. And I understand for you, Tim Stradamus, you're more organized than I am. Like I may be particular where I put things, but I never expect for other people 
to know where I put my things. Well, I think this is where in my mind I've tried to understand it because I can see this being the opposite where the OP in the story is organized. It kind of reminds me of you. And then her boyfriend is disorganized to her. For me, I see it as he's probably that chaotic organization that I'm used to. There's a functioning place for everything. There is. Now, in my mind, you and I have had our talks on what we do and don't accept with each other. I think those are important, especially when you're starting to live with someone. I think for me, the problem here stems when you're being told something. It would be no different than if I went to your desk, Mr. Domus, and started moving stuff around because I feel as if however you have it isn't right. But as a person that's just moving in and you're doing that to an entire house, that can be extremely jarring sure. and almost disrespectful, especially when you're having conversations and you're saying, no, this is the way that it is for this reason. But then everything that you're saying is being overlooked. Now, I will say Redditors pointed this out that they can see where she's trying to play too much into the stereotypes and you're trying to make your boyfriend look bad by calling him disorganized and trying to point this forward so that you can be right. But what you did was wrong. Yes. And no matter how much you try and point out that he's apparently disorganized, nobody can see it in that way because you clearly didn't take what he said seriously and now have messed up stuff that the entire internet is saying you've messed up. I mean, you got to throw all that rice away because you're not going to be able to divide it. You can divide it. It'll just take a very long time, but you can do it. No, thank you. With some chopsticks. Oh, God. (laughs) Now, let me go ahead and point in some of my thoughts on this that sort of somewhat deviates away from commenters. You explain that they could be young and our OP is 26. She's not what I consider young. She's not what I consider old. She's kind of like in the middle of establishing herself. I thought we were talking about someone might be 19 or 20, freshly coming out of college or their folks' house. Her boyfriend is 23. Okay. He's three years younger. And in my mind, I've wondered about this. I wonder if there's this sort of seniority at play here. Is there a reason why she keeps downplaying him and calling him disorganized? And could this be because she considers herself to be the older one in their relationship and therefore more mature? Is this the push forward when it comes to that? Do people really do that? I have heard of some people talking like that as if since they're they've got a few more years on the other person that they have like that little bit more experience, even though they're still within that window. But when you're young and in a new relationship, just moved in that year where she's moved in with him, I kind of wonder about that being a dynamic in their relationship as to a reason why she's pushing for this. The I know best situation. Correct. It's almost as if it's that whole sibling sort of thinking at play and you don't realize you're doing it, but in a relationship. I can just hope that maybe this is their first time living with another person. You you need to learn how to compromise and talk. And you shouldn't disregard what someone says. Take into account. Find the compromise. I love that word. Let's go to our very last story of the day. And I wonder if I'll end us off in a good note or a bad one. For our last story. Why are you saying it like that? (laughs) Because I think this is a great one. Okay. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife fat? That's why you said it like that. (laughs) (laughs) I, 34 male, work in a physically demanding field. Myself and my coworkers are all fit people without a lot of body type variety. My wife, 32 female, is fat. The thing is, she's always been fat. The whole time I've known her, we dated when she was fat. We got married when she was fat. She knows she's fat. She's fat and she's beautiful. I'm happy if she loses weight and I'm happy if she stays where she is. I think she's the most beautiful woman in the world as is. One of my coworkers, Julia, 28 female, started complaining that she's too fat to be loved and fat people don't get to be loved. Julia isn't fat. She's maybe, maybe 120 pounds. She works out five times a week and barely ever eats. I told her that wasn't true and that my wife was fat. 
she got really red in the face and started telling me that I wasn't allowed to call my wife fat, that I was insulting her, and that my wife was beautiful and curvy. Carol doesn't like being called curvy. She thinks it's a label used to avoid calling people fat because it's a dirty word to most people. I told Julia as much. Julia started threatening to tell my wife I called her fat. She pulled up her Instagram and told me she was messaging Carol that I was being mean. I beat her to the punch and called my wife, put her on speaker, and asked her if she was curvy or fat. Carol laughed and said, I hate that curvy shit. Fat and beautiful baby. I thanked her, told her I loved her, and hung up. As soon as I hit end, Julia went mental. She started screaming that I was abusing my wife. When I asked how, she said I was clearly brainwashing her into accepting the term fat to try to keep her complacent and from getting away from me, that no woman in her right mind could be okay with her husband calling them fat. I showed her a picture of my wife in a shirt that had BBW on it. She bought it for herself, by the way. She stormed off and hasn't spoken to me since. Now, I just walked in today to an email from HR requesting a meeting with me. I don't think it's a big deal. I have my wife's blog for fat positivity, the shirt, and can easily call her for proof. But now, things are frigid at work, and Julie constantly gives me dirty looks when we're in the same room. She ignores me otherwise. So I'm just over here scratching my head. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife fat? So what we have here is a projection of one's values onto someone else. I do not believe our OP is the a-hole. In fact, it sounds like he's embraced the way his wife loves herself. And she's defined it to him so well that he can define it to other people how she feels about herself. Because she says it. Don't hit me with that curvy stuff. It's fat. And to her, that's what it is. You can sugarcoat names all you want to. And to make yourself feel better, if that's what you'd like to do, you can do that. I respect that people want to do that for themselves if that's what they choose. But in return, I would hope that they would respect the way I feel about something as well. Respect goes both ways. Now, I'm shocked that our 28-year-old uh, coworker Julia, doesn't understand that at this point. He says that she's complaining one day that she is fat. And that apparently fat people don't deserve to be loved. There are some very gross undertones of self-image she has. And it's really bad because he points it out. She's maybe 120 pounds. If you're talking about yourself like that. Now, it might be one of two ways. Maybe you're just fishing because some people do that. But even though they are fishing, they still might believe in their head that they're undeserving. That's a problem. And you definitely projected that all over ROP. He gives it to her honestly. And the best part here was he was able to show her proof. Like he called his wife. That's a perfectly healthy relationship in my opinion. But then she goes a bit further after being shown the proof and accuses him of terrible things. For what? I have no idea outside of she just wanted to be right. And I guess no woman, no self-respecting woman could possibly think differently than her. Because if they do, apparently she's brainwashed and controlled. That is a very hard turn to take on someone when you don't know them. Because clearly you don't know them. What an interesting story, though. OP, you're not the a-hole. Your coworker, though, she definitely needs to go get into some counseling. Figure out whatever issue she's got going on because you can't walk through life throwing your problems on everyone else. Aside from that, but from how OP explains it, she might have ED. Big time. And... What's even worse is she's gotten HR involved with something that she felt attacked. That's the issue here is why would you at that point when you heard from the wife? Now, I get it if this is one sided and, you know, we can go down that road. But he calls his wife. He shows evidence of uh, the shirt she got. It, it, there's there's proof here. I hope that there's an update and this is resolved in a grown up adult way. I love that you respect your wife enough to use the terminology that you guys have agreed on. So let me go ahead and give you the consensus on Reddit. The consensus on Reddit is that our OP is definitely not the a-hole after they read past the title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, fine. I have... <laughs> 
In the context, yes, it makes sense. Which I must say threw a lot of Redditors for a loop. But our OP did say he had to hook you in. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a good place to discuss it, right? Oh, he hooked me in. Now, a lot of Redditors came forward saying, OP, your coworker essentially fished for validation from a man, a married man at that, then went off on him for loving his wife, threatened to direct message her, and then reported him to HR. If that's not unhinged, I'm not sure what is. Now, others said it is not OP's fault that Julia has her insecurities and that she's trying to project it on his wife. That Julia essentially tried to push OP into an image of being fat phobic when that was clearly not the case, especially since his wife came on and confirmed it. Now, OP did provide us with an update. Oh. So let's go ahead and read that for you. Goosebumps. <laughs> So I met with HR at four today. Apparently, multiple co-workers who had overheard the conversation stopped by HR through the day to give their side slash weigh in. I wasn't in trouble. They just wanted my side of things. It checked out with what everyone else had said, too. I still don't know which of my crew stopped by, but I owe them my life. I offered to show my wife's blog and our rep, who's a really nice girl, told me that if it didn't affect my work, it was irrelevant. The story has been corroborated enough by others. HR reiterated a lot of what y'all said. Even though Julia initiated the conversation, I shouldn't have jumped in. It was less of a scolding and more of a request to keep my nose out of other people's business. I'm sad because I thought Julia and I were friends. We talked about our mental health struggles, the hardships of the field we're in, and heavy things like that. Won't be having those conversations any further. Julia and I will no longer be paired on teams for patient care. I was told my part in the investigation was done, and they thanked me for my time, so I think I'm going to be okay. Before I left, I told HR that if weight loss slash body image wasn't supposed to be a topic of conversation, they should consider enforcing that on a company level. We have a weight loss challenge. I suggested making it a fitness challenge instead. She said they'd take it into consideration. So that's it. I wrapped up my treatments. Everything will hopefully shake out. Haven't spoken to Julia. Hoping to avoid her for the near future. Thank you all for the sanity check. Now to cute clue. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Good stuff. I must say, and I will read one commenter and our OP that responded to them because I thought it was pretty nice. So one commenter said, I'm not going to lie. In the first half of the post, I would have said you're the a-hole. But with context and explanation from not only you, but your wife, you're definitely not the a-hole. It's apparent that your coworker isn't only insecure about herself, but she loosely uses the term fat to describe herself. And when you tell her she's not and put the word into an applicable situation, she loses it. It makes zero sense. And I'd say the insecurities go deeper than body image if she's seriously going to HR over the issue. Personally, I'd be really offended if my boyfriend not only called me fat to my face, but said it to other people. I've struggled with my weight for years, and even though I've lost 75 pounds and measure a perfect hourglass, 39 bust, 29 waist, 39 hips, I still struggle with that insecurity. I've always been built with a large chest and booty, but my stomach has constantly bothered me. Mine is more of a mental thing than the physical reality. To be honest, I love that your wife has that body positivity and openly shares it because I wish I could feel the same. She sounds super cool and I love that you support her in the way she feels about herself. Our OP responded and said, She struggles off and on with her body image, but she's asked me to use fat and normalize it and help her be proud. And she's beautiful. I absolutely love her hair and the conditioner she uses for it. And I love her sense of fashion. 
She has the most beautiful eyes, and she does the cutest thing when I make her laugh off guard. But she told me once about a Raul Dahl poem, I probably spelled that wrong, that traits are beautiful on how you carry yourself. A person with an ugly heart is ugly, and a person with a beautiful heart is beautiful, and she makes herself be beautiful through her actions and attitude, and I see it. She's so beautiful and so perfect, and I'm so damn lucky to be with her. I'm sorry for your struggles. I know it's such a hard issue for people. I'm not speaking to anyone else's body after today, but I'm sure you're a fantastic, beautiful person too. Keep fighting the good fight, and thanks for the love to my lovely wife. A perfectly healthy relationship. Like I said before, he embraced her definitions of things, and through his embracement of those words and definitions, it made her feel better about herself. Hands down agreed. Pretty good story. Good way to end off. Yes. We did it. We did it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> well, was that our last story? That was our last story. You can definitely, you're right, hear the love in their relationship. And that's always nice to hear. There's so much bad in these stories. So it's am I the a-hole It's for very refreshing. Reason. Good pick. Well, as our stories come to a close, don't forget, you've seen the world, what you carry in your heart. If you have enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please rate, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more content. We regularly post on Mondays. We would also love to give our warmest thanks to our tea troop on Patreon. Yes, we love and appreciate all you little tea bags. <laughs> And we do have a surprise coming on our Patreon soon. We're creating a little segment called Domus After Dark, Ooh. where we're going to be covering some of the stories that we wouldn't otherwise cover here on our channel just because of what their contents may have. It's still in the same vein of Am I the A-Hole, but covers a bunch of other things. Yes, it's going into other forums like the Relationship Forum um potentially off the chest while some of it might not be true aita like our normal channel is it's going into more adult themes and or darker content so i'm excited to go ahead and talk to you about some of these new topics and it's just our way of saying thank you for everyone who supported us along the way it's yes. been an awesome year and we're we're at the year mark we are at the year mark and i am super excited as always, listeners, we look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments below. What did you think about the stories today? And because we have Valentine's Day coming up soon, do any of you have any plans? It doesn't necessarily have to mean for somebody that you're with. Valentine's Day can be anybody that you love. I think we're going to that sushi place you really like. <gasps> the all-you-can-eat sushi place. Mm -hmm. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if you post it, maybe we'll see it on the internet. Hello, you. Hello, <laughs> you.